had full opportunity to observe the voluptuous contours and admirable symmetry of her person as she drew off her last garment. At this moment, a tame linnet flew towards her, nestled its head between her breasts and nibbled them in wanton play. Ambrosio could bear no more. The blood boiled in his veins and a raging fire rushed through his limbs. I must possess her, he cried. No, no, Ambrosio. I shall no longer be able to combat my passions. I am convinced with every moment that I have but one alternative. I must enjoy you or die. And then when I saw you, I begged Mr. Thorpe to stop, but he only went faster. If only it slowed down, I would have jumped out and run back to you. Please believe me, I would ten thousand times rather have been with you. Are you and Miss Tony really very angry with me? I must confess I felt a little slighted, but my sister was quite sure there was some misunderstanding. Eleanor, you were right, as usual. Miss Morland is not to blame. She was abducted by force. Oh, no, no. Not exactly, but truly, I, I did try to make him stop. Don't tease her, Henry. You were quite cast down when you thought Miss Morden prefer the company of others to your own. Perhaps she still does. No, indeed. Well, that is... Then may I renew our invitation? Shall we say the day after tomorrow for our walk? Very amiable, though, very rich too. All the way, Mr. Allen, who made a fortune in trade, and with no one to spend it on but her, she'll bring a deal of money to her marriage. When the old man pops off, she'll be one of the richest women in the country. Obliged to you, sir. Thorpe. John Thorpe. Delighted to have been. Mr. Thorpe, perhaps you'd introduce me to the young lady. Miss Morland, this is General Tilney. Charming. And did I overhear a country walk proposed? Yes, sir. The day after tomorrow. Then perhaps you would do us the honour of spending the rest of the day with us, after your work, if Mr. and Mrs. Allen can be persuaded to spare you. I'm sure they'd be happy to spare me, sir. And they'll have great pleasure in coming. Excellent. I shall look forward to making your better acquaintance, Miss Morland. What do you think, Catherine? Oh, it's wonderful. It reminds me of the south of France, the Languedoc, you know? Yes. Have you travelled much in France? No. Not at all. I've never been there. But I've seen pictures, and it's just as Mrs. Radcliffe describes it in Udolpho. Ah, Mrs. Radcliffe. <laughs> but I suppose you don't read novels. I read your telephone straight through in two days with my hair standing up on end the whole time. I often think there's more life and truth and feeling in a good novel than in a hundred dull sermons. Do you really believe that? Oh, go on. Don't wait for me. Why should you think I don't believe it? Because I think you like to tease me. 
Because the real world is different from the world in stories. Is it? Of course it is. I love to read Mrs. Radcliffe, but I don't think the real world's full of murders and abductions and ghosts with clanking chains and, and seductions and everything. Well, not in Fullerton anyway. Perhaps not quite so many murders and abductions. The broken hearts, the trails, the long-held grudges, schemes of revenge. Fear, hatred, and despair. And they're not part of all of our lives, even in Fullerton? I don't know. I'd like to think not. Well then, I hope your experience of life is the exception that proves the rule. Forgive me, Tilney, for interrupting your walk. I have no time to lose. Of course. You're expected. Mom. Come, let's walk on a little. That gentleman's a close acquaintance of ours. A very good friend. He was obliged to leave the country at short notice. He was able to make his farewells to me last evening. But was no doubt anxious to say goodbye to my sister, too, before he left. I see. There is no reason why the matter should come up. But my sister and I would be very grateful if you did not mention to my father that we saw that gentleman here today. No, of course. Thank you. The monk reeled from the unholy sight. Receive this talisman, she replied. While you bear this, every door will fly open and walls will melt away. It will procure you access tomorrow night to Antonia's bedchamber. Miss Morland. Nothing to be ashamed of. It's all God's creation. Come. 